Hey guys, Christian here with the Worship Outlet, coming to you guys talking about the Worship Keys template. Uh, it's a really great resource for any keyboardist uh, using Mainstage or Logic um, as their main keyboard sounds in worship, um, and we're looking forward to getting through this with you guys. So let's get going. As soon as you open up the Worship Keys template, you'll see the screen, um, basic Mainstage screen. Uh, you have your patch list here on the left side. You have your main workspace here in the middle, and then your channel strips on the right. So with the Worship Keys template, you have two keyboards. You don't need to use both of them, but you can if you would like to. Um, and so you have an 88 key on the bottom and a 61 key on the top. Again, it doesn't have to be 88 keys. It doesn't have to be 61 keys. You can use any keyboard, um, anything that you want to use, really. In the patch list, we have our two favorites set. These are our personal favorites here at the Worship Outlet. Um, just some combos that we really like, um, and even a couple single sounds that we really like uh, to layer together and use. Uh, just some really quality stuff. So like the first one in it is called the Worship Keys Patch. And so here it is. Move up the mod wheel. So that's the first patch that comes up when you open the concert. Um, really cool. Another one of the folders in the Worship Keys template patch list is the two custom sampled sounds. Um, and so there's a whole folder of sounds that we have custom sampled here at the Worship Outlet uh, from synthesizers and such uh, that we've done ourselves. And so there's some really thick, nice sounds. So like this one, two custom synth pad rich. It's just one sound. It's a really thick, massive pad. And when you move up the wa mod wheel, so it's exactly what it says. It's just a big, rich synth pad. Uh, there's other ones in here. I mean, you got like a crystal pad. Just different kinds of stuff like that. Um, so then we have this other folder in the patch list called the two song patch samples. Um, so this is just to give you a taste of our song specific patches that you can get on our website. Um, if you subscribe, you know, you get special deals on certain stuff like these song specific patches. So let's go to Echo. So then you add the upper octave. And you move the mod wheel up, opens up. So, and then the other one we have in here is Jesus. Um, so, new. Mod wheel. So in this two favorite set, um, I'm just going to go through a couple of my favorite patches in here. So obviously the Worship Keys patch, the first one on there, I mean it's really versatile. It's got everything from pianos to a Rhodes, it's got a pad in it, a soft pad, got a shimmer pad, strings in it, a big synth pad, and um, synth arpeggiated. And so it's, it's really nice, really full. Um, let's go over to the worship pad. So again, super common sounds that you hear. Move up the mod wheel. Let's see, um, young synth patch. We've gotten a lot of comments from people about this one when we've, uh, Kind of giving you guys a preview of it. It's really, really cool. I love it. And then you got a lead up here. So 
So it works really well for pretty much any synth-driven song. It's really awesome. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Boss level. So when I created this patch, it reminded me of like the final level on um, like a video game or something, just whenever you're fighting that boss. And so here it is. <laughs> Awesome thick patch, lots of arps. Um, it's got a kick drum in there and a snare drum in there. You might use it during worship. <laughs> it's just so much fun to play on your own. Um, that reminds me of this other one. So, <laughs> so as keyboardists, you know, we don't really get to shred per se as much as guitarists. And so I made this patch, um, the distorted electric guitar. It's so much fun. You get to mess with <laughs> guitarists when you use it. Um, so I'm going to reach over here to this pitch wheel and see how I can do it. It's just... <laughs> so it's just lots of fun to use. Just, just one of those fun patches. Um, let's see. Happy sound guy. So every sound guy um, wants a couple things from each person that's playing in the worship team. They want, um, they want a thick sound that will fill up space, but they also don't want it to be too muddy on the low ends. Um, but then they also want some crisp stuff in the high end, so it'll cut through the mix really well. And that's exactly what this is. Um, as you can see, it's got a piano. Um, it's got an Eastern accent, which is basically like a dulcimer type thing. Um, it's got bells you know, a bunch of different stuff, so here it is. Open up the mod wheel. That's the happy sound guy patch. Um, let's see, you got an upright piano in here. I could go on and on about these patches, just lots of really cool stuff. Um, I love this B3 organ patch. This is really cool. So, um, you know, lots of gospel musicians use main stage. Um, and even if you're not necessarily a gospel musician per se, but you play gospel music every once in a while in your services, this is great for it. So that Leslie emulation is based on your sustain pedal. So since organs don't have a sustain pedal, we used the sustain pedal to do the, uh, the Leslie speed modulation. So as with most of our sounds, you use a mod wheel to brighten it up a little bit. And so I'm just going to hold this. So it just slowly, it just slowly brightens up the further you go to where it's basically full stops. So again. It's just so much fun. So, uh, let's see. You got a versatile piano and pad. Like I said, you can go through all these all day. Um, so, there's just lots of really cool patches in here that you can use every week. Um, I mean, there's patches for every every song you could really even want in here in the two favorites set. Um, so it's really cool. I love it so much. So maybe you're looking at this and you're thinking, oh dude, this looks so sweet. I, it, it also looks a little complicated. <laughs> I don't know if I can use this, but it's super easy to use. Um, so everything on the template is mapped and assigned to the Core Nano Control 2. Um, it's a really cheap, like $70 MIDI controller that you can use pretty much anywhere. 
Um, if you have like a USB hub, you can have multiple controllers or anything plugged into your computer at once. And this is one of them. So it's got eight faders, eight knobs, eight sets of three buttons on it. It's just a whole bunch. Industry standard MIDI controller. You got to have it. It's so cool. And so um, as you can see on the screen, there's eight faders, eight knobs, eight sets of three buttons, etc. And so each one of these faders on the nano control adjusts the fader that you see on the screen and therefore adjusts the sounds on the screen. So if I turn all these faders down and just have that first one up, you get just that two piano soft right there. If I turn up just the second one, it's just that hard piano. So you can hear what each sound sounds like. Here's the Rhodes. So you can go through each of those sounds and adjust it however you want. And then you can mix them on your own. Um, so if you wanted mostly soft piano with a little hard piano, a bunch of Rhodes, maybe a half pad, more shimmer pad, half strings, you know, just mix your own thing. You can get super personalized sounds. So if you're like, eh, I don't like the shimmer pad, let's take that out. Maybe take down some strings with it and add some arpeggiated synth. So you can do that all on the fly, all in the middle of a song. You can program it before the song so you have it exactly like you want it and just press save on your computer and it's done. It's saved for whatever song you want. Um, so it's a really cool setup. In addition to that top portion with all the faders and knobs and everything, um, on the left side you have some other controls. So where it says previous patch and next patch and drone and tap tempo, that's the bottom set of five buttons on the nano control. Um, and so you can use them to navigate through the concert patches as fast as you want. Um, and then the play button says drone on the screen. That's how you start the drone pad. In the worship keys template, we have the drone section. And what it does is essentially it plays the root and the fifth of whatever key you select. And so you can have that playing through the entire song as basically a glue to your whole mix of sounds. So everything will sound really consistent. It'll sound really even and all together. Um, it's basically as if you had another keyboardist playing a pad in addition to you playing your sounds. So it's like you have two keyboardists playing at the same time. So it's a really cool um, double feature kind of thing. So here's what it sounds like. I'll turn it up for you guys. So on the drone section, obviously you have all those different keys. If you want to switch keys, you just click it and it'll switch to it automatically, nicely, smoothly. It won't cut off or anything. And it won't stop until you press the drone button on your nano control again. Um, and so it'll go forever and ever if you have a really long set list and maybe pastor just wants to come up and talk for a little bit. Um, and he ends up talking like 15, 20 minutes. That's happened to me quite a few times. And so I just leave this going and I just play quietly underneath it. I'll turn everything else down and just have the piano do a key. And if it's too loud, you can lower the volume. Okay. Also, at the bottom of it, I'm going to leave this playing so you can hear it. We have a shimmer knob. It does exactly what it says. Turn it up. Sounds like that. Turn it all the way down. Sounds like that. So I always like to have a little bit of shimmer in there, but not too much. Maybe like right there. Uh, next button is an octave button. So you can have your drone pad be an octave lower if you want. If you just want a thicker sound. Just That's my personal preference. And then the next three knobs are the EQ. So if you want more low end in it, you can turn the lows up. Or if you want less low end, you can turn them all the way down. I like to have it a little past halfway. Mids I like to have up and highs I usually have down a little bit. And so, I mean, it, it just works. It's so nice. So then you don't have to be playing another pad sounds in addition to that. You can just be playing piano. Real simple, just focus on that. But if you do want to add in a pad, <laughs> just use this patch. And we will add in that pad. 
you want to add some more reverb. Let me add an octave. So, I mean, there's, there's so many things you can do with this template. Um, if you can imagine it, you can do it with this template. It's so cool. Um, in addition, so let's say you have two keyboards. You're one of those advanced people um, that is using two keyboards in worship. Props to you. It's really cool to look on stage and then have two keyboards too. Um, and so say like you just want your arpeggiated synth on the top keyboard. And so really easy way to do this. So you look at the name here. It says two synth arp Apollo. So I'm going to come down here to the channel strips area and look for that. Here it is. See, 2S Apollo. So now, in order to make it go to the top keyboard, you select it, make sure it's highlighted. Come down here to the instrument channel strip inspector section, MIDI input, and then here it says keyboard, and then you can select which keyboard, keyboard one or keyboard two. Okay? So I'm going to select keyboard two. And now you see it went up to the top keyboard. If I switch it back, that orange layer will go back down to the bottom. So now, so now that'll be up there on the second keyboard. So you can do that with any of the sounds. If you maybe want just pads on one keyboard, you can do that. Just set all your pads to be over there. Um, and it's, it's just so cool. I love it. OK. Um, with the Worship Keys template, um, we have mod wheel brightness built into every sound. Um, and so. If I go to the worship pad here, um, so the mod wheel's all the way down, okay? Now if I turn the mod wheel all the way up, so that happens for every sound. If I go to the shimmer for days patch, turn this mod wheel all the way down, turn it all the way up, okay? And it slowly fades as you go up. It's not just a hard set thing, okay? Um, there's also a pitch wheel next to it. Of course, we don't really use that a whole lot as keyboardists, but useful at times, for sure. Next, we have the transpose knob. So what this will do is exactly what it says. It transposes your MIDI input to your computer. So say, say a song is in D flat. I don't love playing in D flat. I can all day, but I don't love it. So what we're going to do is come here to this transpose knob and just move it up one. So now I can play in C, and it sounds the exact same as D flat. And the mod wheel and everything still works all the same. All the layers still work the same. Everything still works the same, it just sounds a little bit higher or lower as much as you want. It can go up or down a whole octave if you want. On to the master section. So. Over there on the bottom right side, you see where it says master and CPU. This is the master section. So um, you see a fader and a level meter there. If I play something, see it lights up right below where it says master. Okay. So this is your output to the outside world. Okay. Um, so that master fader, you know, sometimes you want to make sure no sound comes out or you want to just lower your whole level entirely for like imitation or something, um, you can just lower that master fader to like halfway and then bring it back up whenever the band comes back in or something. Um, really useful. Um, right next to it, you have a CPU meter. Um, also very helpful in case you have any problems or anything that'll spike and let you know, uh, let you know if anything is happening that you don't want to happen. Um, below that, we have three knobs again, low, middle, and high. It's an EQ. And so this is on the master level. So if you change those knobs on one patch, it'll happen for the entire concert. So let's say you're in worship and you're playing and the sound guy is like, oh, man, Chris, you've got too much lows. Like, take out some of the lows, can you? I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. Um, and it'll happen over every single patch. You don't have to go into every individual patch and like EQ each channel strip and then do that for the next patch and the next patch, it just gets 
to be a whole mess. And so we put that master EQ on there for you guys just for that. Um, next to that, we have the panic button. Um, rarely it happens, but sometimes it happens with any main stage concert that you have. Just something happens with the computer. You know, that is there just in case anything happens. And what that does is it clears everything and resets it for you. So let's say I'm holding these notes. And then what if I let go of these notes and they're still playing? Um, for some reason, they're stuck. And I'm like on to the next part of the song. But everything's holding. You don't know why. Click that panic button and get back to play and you're perfectly fine. Safe to go, um, perfect in case of accidents. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Lastly, we have the mono button. Um, this, this changes everything from being stereo to mono. So stereo, um, if you've ever seen like a Instagram video or a SoundCloud thing um, where they say listen with headphones, that's why they say listen with headphones because it's stereo. Stereo means there's separate signals coming to your left ear and your right ear. And so obviously stereo sounds much fuller, much better in general um, with keys. And so if you have the ability to do stereo, do that. But if you don't, if you only have one input to the board, just click this mono button here. And it's the same coming out both sides. Um, and so you can send just one input to the board. You can hear it pretty much sounds the same. And so um, it's a great utilization of the mono feature there. With the Worship Keys template, we also have a few reminders that we want to give you guys um, in case you have any problems, you know, troubleshooting issues. Let's say you get to church on Sunday morning and you plug in, everything's ready to go. Uh, you come to the first song or sound check or whatever and you play and you don't have any sound. That is the worst thing that happens. I hate it. And so you panic. You're like, what do I do? Okay, don't panic. So We've got this section here on the bottom left called Two Reminders, and it says click me while the concert patch is selected. So you go over here to the patch list and go to the very top and click the concert name. That's up here. When you do that, you're going to come back down here and do what it says, click me while the concert patch is selected. So I'm going to click it, and now all this text shows up. Okay? This is basic troubleshooting stuff to help you with in case anything happens that you're not exactly sure what to do with it. Um, like not having any sound come out or maybe like your keyboard isn't sending MIDI to your computer, anything like that, check this and it'll help you out tremendously. At the end, it says if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at www.theworshipoutlet.com. Um, always feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help you guys in any way that we can. Um, and so always feel free to do that. Another feature of the Worship Keys template is the tap tempo. So lots of People don't have the ability to use click in worship, um, and so you have to utilize tap tempo when you're using a song that has arpeggiated synths um, or anything like that. And so let's say a song, I'll just think of a song, two, three, four, one. And let's say you want to use the same patch for another song, but the other song is completely slower. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two. So the tap tempo is a great feature, especially if you're not using click. Or even if you are using click, you can just use the same patch for a couple of different songs. Just tap in your tempo, um, and it's ready to go, just like a guitarist does on his pedal board. Another feature of the Worship Keys template is the MIDI monitor. Um, so when you're using a keyboard with main stage, obviously you're sending signal from your keyboard to your computer. And lots of times people will ask, you know, I'm, I'm turning this knob on my keyboard or this fader on my keyboard and main stage isn't recognizing it. You know, like you try to assign it in layout mode or something and it's, it's just not working. I don't know why. And so what you can do is come back here into edit mode and go down here to the bottom right to this MIDI monitor. What this will do is show you exactly what signals your keyboard is sending to your computer. So if you 
So let's say I'm going to move this knob here. So I'm moving it. Nothing is being sent to the computer. I don't see the MIDI monitor changing at all. Okay. Um, that means go to the two reminders, read through that. It'll tell you basically, you know, either your keyboard's not connected, or you need a driver, or your keyboard's not on. <laughs> Different stuff like that. Um, but if something is sending signal to your computer, like I'm going to move one of these faders, you see how it changes. You don't have to worry about all the letters, all the numbers. Just see that it changes. That's what is important. If I had press a button, I mean, it'll change. Okay, That's what you're looking for. Um, so this is great if, for some reason, again, you're not sending signal to front of house, if for some reason your computer's not making any noise, if you know, it could be a whole host of things. Um, but MIDI monitor is a great utilization um, of figuring out whether you're sending signal to your computer or not. Thanks, guys, for watching this video on the Worship Keys template. We hope this template empowers you guys to really play your best and sound your best for the Lord at, uh, in worship and wherever you may be using this template. Um, we really hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you have a great time using it. As always, feel free to reach out to us, contact us at theworshipoutlet.com, send us a message. Um, feel free to let us know if you have any questions or comments, um, any suggestions. We love to hear from you guys, and we're here to help in any way that we can. As always, uh, follow us on Instagram, like our Facebook page, join our Facebook group, the Worship Outlet community, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and uh, we hope to see you guys soon. Revolutionary resources, creative community, the Worship Outlet.